For those of you that are not familiar with my channel, I'm usually fixing automotive electronics, which I really enjoy doing. It is kind of cool to keep all the cars on the road working right the way they're supposed to. But my most viewed video has nothing to do with automotive electronics. It is about a 99 cent VCR that I picked up at Goodwill. And here that is. It was actually Salvation Army. Still has the price tag on it, not Goodwill. But uh, this machine ended up proving useful, and I'm very glad I got it, because I ended up using the FireWire port to convert some old uh, home video to DVD, and it was slick. Straight FireWire, straight to DVD. Quality looked good. It worked out really well. Here I found another weird piece of year 2000-ish uh, home video type technology at a Goodwill. Now this one is just a DVD player, but it got my attention because of a record button on a DVD player. Usually you're not going to find that. So this looks like it does have a rewritable uh, DVD drive. Um, let's see, what did I pay for this thing? I paid, well the sticker on it shows $10.99, but it was on a half price day. So what was it, $5.49? It's the top item here. Come on, focus. Five forty nine. Yeah. Okay. And then, so I was five forty nine for the unit. The remote was sold separately. Of course, I looked all over the store to see if I could find the remote. It was not there, so I ended up paying more for the remote than I did for the player. But I know some of you are saying, "Well, just use a universal remote. What's the big deal?" Well, when it comes to some of these specialty, weird, oddball type um, AV components, the universal remote usually is missing a important button like it might not have a record button for a dvd player or something so i just had a feeling there's going to be some feature that wasn't going to work right without the original remote so i may never financially recover but i have the remote for it and while i was in the store i looked up the reviews on it and the reviews are absolutely awful one star out of five most people say some people say they don't even work brand new out of the box some people say they work shortly after buying some people are saying they have bad capacitors, maybe. I don't know. We'll open it up. But the reviews are awful. So this thing might... I haven't plugged it in yet. I don't know if it works. I just saw it. saw it was interesting. I said, okay, let's let's do this. Let's see if, uh, see if it does anything at all. It still has the protective shipping film on it. I don't know if that's a good sign or a bad sign. Must not get used a whole lot. Uh, but I did notice it says right here, little windows icon it does say it plays windows media i'm not exactly sure what that means does windows media did it have its own weird file format or something i i don't know there's no there's no network port on the back it just has antenna so it must have a tuner that's interesting oh is it meant to record off air so would that be a digital tuner or an analog tuner what what year is this from i don't even know uh i don't know it doesn't say year anywhere interesting but anyway it's got s video uh composite coaxial audio so maybe it has a form of digital audio yeah i suppose it can digital audio out to maybe your stereo so video okay so oh input so input is s video and output is also s video oh it's got progressive scan that's video output only so that must just be if you're playing a regular dvd you can get uh, progressive scan 480p that's probably all it's gonna do it that, that's all it can do it's just a dvd player but that tuner part is interesting a dvd player with a tuner so i suppose it can record off air that is neat all right so there's a look around the unit Oh, there's a manufacture date, 2005. Does that mean it would have a digital tuner? I don't know when digital tuners became the norm. Anyways, should we... Oh, it's got the little uh, don't steal me uh, RFID tag built right into the back. Yeah, I don't think we have to worry about that anymore. Oh, look at that. For ejection, insert a pin and push to the left. It's got a little manual... Uh, dvd eject for when it breaks down on you should we plug it in and see what happens yes i think we should let's do that right now i have not powered it up yet i don't know what's going to happen maybe it'll work just fine it'll be a boring video let's let's find out i'll plug it in okay 
she's plugged in and uh, standby right here. <laughs> standby, right? Let's try the remote. Let's try the remote. Remote's got a power button. Uh, or the IR sensor probably right in here somewhere. Ooh, look at that. Okay, I mean, I am plugged in. Yeah, I'm plugged in there. Power, standby, let's try eject. It is dead, and I'm making sure, yeah, I'm I'm plugged in. Power strip is turned on. The unit is completely dead. Nice. I guess we are taking this thing apart. Okay, all the screws are out. Got the side screws out. Top and bottom screws. All right, this thing should, should slide off now. All right, should just should just slide right off now. What am I hooked on? Okay, it should just slide right off now. There's some hooks somewhere. What is going on here? There we go. We're hooked in the back. Aha. Oh, I already see bad capacitors right there in the power supply. We got uh, just the beginnings of, let me let me zoom in on there, of, uh, yeah, see the, the, the dome tops there? It's starting to ooze just a little bit. That cap, that cap looks good, you know. Yeah, these might be okay. There's no leakage. No other pop caps, just two. Two bad caps. That's probably what's keeping us from turning on. Oh, wait, no, I lied. Look at over here on the uh, the main board. That one's even worse yet. Ooh. Then we got a button cell battery, which is probably dead. Uh, I might have to uh, pop the DVD drive. Yeah, there's more components on the main board under the DVD drive. I'll probably should scan that real quick too. If there's a bad cap here, it's possible there's more bad caps hiding under the drive. But yeah, hey, this might be an easy fix. Boards are removed. And uh, here's the two bad caps in the power supply. Now get a load of the brand of the capacitor. Let's see if I can get a zoom in on that there. Uh, the brand is Fuju. Yeah. Fuju. Yeah, nice. See, it's on these ones, too. Anyways, so I got the DVD drive out so I can take a look at the main board. I'm not going to remove the ribbon wires because I don't think I have to take a peek in there. There is a lot of electrolytic caps, but there's little ones, and all the small ones are a different brand. Well, not all of them. 90% 90, 90 of these small caps are from a different manufacturer, and I don't see any... Uh, pop tops or leaky electrolytic juices except for this one exposed cap here which is an SY brand so anyways I think I just I'm just gonna worry about the visible visibly bad capacitors for now if I replace these caps and if it still doesn't work then I'll worry about replacing caps that aren't visibly bad but for now I have uh, dug out some replacements. And for those of you that might have the same similar model and want to fix it yourself, all you need is uh, two 10 volt 2200 microfarad caps for the power supply. That's location C14 and C20. Main board is, uh, I can't get the location number because it's covered in goo, but the main board cap that's bad is a 6.3 volt 2200 microfarad capacitor. I have dug out some used capacitors because I don't feel like wasting new capacitors for a $6 DVD player. So here's a uh, used 6.3 volt 2200 for the main board. I selected three caps for the power supply because I have a matching pair of ShamWow branded uh, 10 volters, uh, but they're wider. I don't know if I'll be able to fit them nicely. I might have to angle them and I don't know. We'll just see. So I got one skinny 10 volt 2200 and these are also 10 volt 2200, but they're just a wider diameter. I think this one slightly taller on the skinnier one. Either way, nah, they'll all work. I just have to see what physically fits the best.
chords are marked with polarity, but I don't think I'm going to be able to fit these two matching uh, wider diameter, larger diameter. Oh, maybe, you know what? Maybe that does fit. Yeah, I think I can go with a matching pair for the power supply. Yep, that will work. Okay, I don't need the skinny one. Let's go ahead and get these in. panel goes here okay I think that's all the cables that's plugged in let's power this thing up and hope that we now have some uh, front panel display maybe a DVD drive that does something uh, yeah cross your fingers hmm so far nothing but let's hit the standby no, it's still dead. Shoot, I'm going to have to do some more troubleshooting. Because, yeah, I'm... Double check my power cord here. Yeah, I'm plugged in and turned on, and it's still dead. No. All right. Here I've disconnected the power supply from the main board. I'm using a 1K jumper to jumper from the standby lead, which is the blue wire, to the 3.3 lead, which is the white wire. That's to turn on the whole power supply. And they were nice enough to label uh, the output here. So here I have my ground on my ground. So you, you should be able to see that. And you can see my multimeter top pin. The yellow wire is 12 volts. I mean, 11.3, close enough. Next one down is ground, so that'll be zero. Uh, red should be 5 volts, and it is. Green is another ground. And then what is the next one here? Orange, and that's 5 volts. Stand okay, that's a standby 5 volt, which is always on. Next one down is a 3.3, which is always on a little on the high side, but it should be good enough. And then this is the standby lead. This is the one I'm forcing 3.3 volts on to turn it on. So the power supply looks like it's doing what it's supposed to be doing, which sucks because that means there's a main board problem. Uh, never mind, it just fixed itself. I plugged the power supply in and the drive started making noise. Well, what the heck was that all about? I guess it just needed a minute to think about things. Yeah, it's on now. No disc. Okay, let's eject. Um, oh no, open drive. Are you going to open? Close. Oh no, I think we have a bad drive. Um, no. I wonder if it's got a bad belt. <sighs> Try that one more time. I took the, uh, I took this off to get the front plate off, but that shouldn't be needed for the drive. Well, we're getting somewhere. Yeah, what do you think, kitty? We almost got to do something. Yes, kitty, I see you. Let's try the Xbox 360 trick to get it to open. Yep, <laughs> it works. Wait, why'd you close? Well, open back up again. You, I, you didn't even stay open long enough to put a disc in. There we go. No, why are you trying to suck it back in right away? There you go. Does it is it just tired? You just need to stretch. Maybe maybe we'll maybe we'll, no. It's still. I bet the belt's stretched and it's really. Stop closing yourself. Open. No, open. Okay. All right. See if the uh, laser works with the uh, one of the greatest movies ever made. 
is the laser going to read? Hey, kind of, wait. What does that mean? What is, what is that? Title? Okay, title screen. If I just hit play, it should play, right? I have a remote. Um, a lot of buttons on this remote, and I don't see stop, fast forward. Come on, the play should be play pause. And there it is. Is there an enter? I might have to hook this up to a TV and see see what's going on. I think it's on the title screen. I mean, I should be able to hit enter and it should start playing, but I don't know. It's doing something. I'm going to see if it'll eject. Oh, oh, it's actually ejecting. Holy crap. And then let's try to play again. This thing's just fixing itself. It might just work. Let's hook up a TV. Okay, so that's a good sign. The laser for playing a DVD is working. But what is all this business about recording? And the tuner. Curious, still curious about the tuner. Let's dig into that. The unit has a neat little on-screen menu. But unfortunately, it looks like it's just an analog tuner. So it's not going to pick up anything here. All the analog stations are probably long gone. Um, so I can't use the antenna input, but it still does have other inputs. Since I have this unit still most of the way apart, I think I'm gonna try to change out the belt. Got the old one off, which is here. See, it still has the, the shape that it was stuck in for 20 years or whatever it was. Uh, I still have belts left over from when I did the Iowa stereo refurbishing cassette deck. And uh, some of these belts look like they might work. Now, like I was saying, with an Xbox 360, they have a similar belt set up with the way you can get to the belt without having to take the uh, drive all the way apart. Oh, look at that. It's on. There's, there's the belt. It's on the pulleys. And it feels... Like a good fit. So let's, here we've got a blank DVD. I'm going to see what all this machine can do with that. Try out the uh, recorder end of it. Should ask to format it. It's a brand new blank DVD. And there it is. I'm going to go with uh, format disc. And there it goes. It's formatting it. Okay, 100% free, 61 minutes in high quality. Oh, it's got slow play, extended play, long play, I suppose. Super long play. You can do 488 minutes. I'm sure that's uh, gonna be great quality. Here's a retail copy of Titanic. Came out in about 97. So this should be copyright protected. I believe it's called Macrovision or something like that. Um, so I should not be able to copy 
onto uh, a DVD through this machine, but you know what, we're gonna just see what happens. Here is a blank DVD that the machine has already formatted. And uh, well, it's already playing. Let me just tell this VCR to settle down for a second here. Um, let the DVD player catch up. I will say the on-screen menus are actually pretty good for uh, a machine of this vintage. All right, so I should be able to just play on the VCR. I'm going in through the RF, which is very limiting, yes. And let me just hit the record button and see what happens. It says, please wait. The distortion on this tape is because the tape has been eaten, but uh, it did say record. And the record light is going, which I don't understand why it's allowing it. It shouldn't, it should be copy protected. So I'm not gonna go too long, otherwise I'll have the uh, FBI agents uh, at my front door, but I'll just give this a second to run. And like I did say, I am going through the RF out on the VCR. So RF in on the DVD burner, sets channel three. Um, so very limited in resolution. I think VHS tapes have a maximum of 480p, but RF has a maximum of 480i, I believe. Don't quote me on that. I'm just going off of my old memory. So the resolution is going to suffer, um, but let's just stop this for a second. No, and stop button, there it is. Okay. Well, there it is. So there's the recording. I'm just going to see if it'll let me play it. And there it is, we are playing off of, see I can even eject, eject the VHS tape. There's the Titanic and it's playing it off of the DVD. It works and it's not supposed to copy a VHS that is copy protected, but here we are. Uh, all right, maybe I'll try the RCA cables. You'll get slightly better resolution or definition cleaner signal through RCA than RF. Maybe I'll try that next. I have removed the RF uh, and switched it over to RCA. Now I have to find the input button. There's source, uh, video one, there's video one. Okay, so now we're going RCA out of the VCR into the DVD burner. Um, okay, so that should start playing, and let's hit the record button and see what happens. It says it's recording. Huh. Interesting. Still, uh, the copy protection is not working. Hmm. I don't understand why, because I'm pretty sure there should be copy protection on it. It's a retail VHS, and it says it's recording. I'll just let it run for a minute. All right, I'm gonna stop the recording here. Uh, again, I don't wanna to go to prison forever. You know how they get about uh, copy protection. And now I'll see if I can manage my way to the menu. All right, and um, so this is gonna be, let's see, this is from the VHS through RF. This is gonna be VHS from RCA. I'm gonna hit enter on that. And there it is. So we're playing off of the DVD. Picture quality is, you know, muddy, like you'd expect from VHS. Now, I think the main point of this machine is to, like, transfer over family videos from off a camcorder. 
Of course, I don't think they intended you to become a pirate with this machine, but uh, looks to me like it lets you. Switched over to a DVD player, so now I'm going from a DVD through the RCA, through line in on the VCR, out of the VCR through RCA, into the RCA input of the burner. And there is uh, the image of the DVD. I do see some flickering. I think that's related to the copy protection. I'm just going to see what happens if I hit record now. Oh, there we go. Signal is copy protected. That's what I was expecting to see. Um, okay, so the copy protection works from DVD, but not VHS. I did not know that. The only other thing I think this would be useful for is maybe if I had an over-the-air analog-to-digital converter, I could uh, capture over-the-air high-definition, will be converted to RF, and I could probably record off of uh, broadcasted uh, TV, you know, with, with the digital-to-analog digital converter because the built-in tuner is analog only, which analog tuners don't work anymore. So I could probably use it for that. I don't have a need for that. I also don't have a converter on hand, but man, those little converter boxes are all over the uh, thrift stores, so I could get one. But uh, anyways, the machine seems to be fully operational. I don't understand why it got so much hate online with the reviews. It actually has a pretty slick on-screen menu system, and it's easy to use. And it would be helpful if someone has old home videos that they want to get off of tape and get it on a slightly more modern DVD. But I think that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. It was a fun little, uh, fun little trip and, uh, yeah. See you in the next video.